My name is B.E. Jacks. I'm an artist, oil painter, I'm a poet as well as a curator, a writer, a juror. I've done a lot of things <laughs> related to the arts, which I love. I see my voice as a conduit to portray art as a vital and necessary element in life. Art is life to me. No subject is off limits in my work. I'm very grateful to have had my work represented in various galleries and museums. I'm also a member of several amazing art organizations. I love collaborating with artists and patrons who share my passion in promoting the arts. One of the many groups I was fortunate to be part of was an art colony, where I began curating my own work along with the work of my fellow artists. Small exhibits became larger themed shows, which turned into a gallery and a publication where I was able to jury, curate, and publish the work of so many artists from, from over 60 countries. So absorbing as much art as possible from other artists is really a, a critical part of my daily routine. Art is a gift. I'm really just inspired by life. The environment greatly, greatly influences much of my work. I practice plein air painting when I can, and studio painting daily. Nature has truly been the greatest teacher for me. We spend so much time as artists visually analyzing, but it's also important to take a moment to listen, to absorb the sound of a place spatially. Sound converses with the visual in a remarkably dynamic way both compositionally and emotionally. So when I go to places I've painted before or I've had an experience with before, I try to imagine it with another sense than what I've used formerly. There's a lot of thought that occurs before I start any piece. I usually begin by first determining how I feel. What emotion am I ready to work with? Am I willing to work with? Color is usually a huge driver of the mood in my pieces. I think about this very, very early on, usually when I'm putting the paint down on the palette or even before that. Then I think about the size. This piece is being painted on an 8 by 6 inch gesso board. I consider the orientation of the piece, the composition, and the design. That is my foundation, and sometimes it changes along the way, which is part of the process. I work in oil and sometimes acrylic. Sometimes I'll start with a wash, and sometimes I don't. It all depends on if I want the substrate to show through in certain places or not. Music is a very important part of my process. The feeling can change throughout the duration of the work. There might be a section where I block in and use my brush quickly, or an area where I need to be more delicate. I usually have a wide variety of brush sizes that I have on hand ready to use, but of course I do have some favorites. I also try to research my subject, the location, the place, and its history. I have actually painted these hills where I live many, many times, and I always try to reimagine it with fresh eyes whenever I go back to a familiar scape. I like to work with light in a more subtle manner. The skyscape in particular is of great interest to me. I have always enjoyed Constable's plein air skyscapes. Going outside and painting while the clouds were moving was a big teaching moment for me. There's no stopping the light and the clouds are changing so you have no choice but to make quick and hopefully smart uh, decisions. So when is the painting completed? Well this is partly up to me and it's partly up to the painting. I look at the piece from several uh, vantage points. I'll turn it upside down. Sometimes I'll use a mirror if it's a larger work. But the painting needs to feel finished, but also still have movement within it. That is something I look for. If I don't see that, then I'll want to change things and work with it for a bit longer. But I try not to play with it too much, particularly if it's an outdoor scene, because I want to keep it vibrant and a little loose. I like that effect in the work itself. 
and then it's done and I sign it and that's it. A huge part of how I learned how to paint was actually at the mini coves in Laguna Beach, California. I would go out and paint early in the morning when the light would change quickly. That sort of quick study work has taught me so much as an artist when I've been able to fully immerse myself into the land. I try to paint so that you can feel and hear the sound in the environment. I endeavor to express all of my senses into the scene as much as possible. When plein air painting, sometimes it would be a bright sunny day, other times it would be rainy and windy, and I would lose a canvas and have to chase it down the beach. So to me, this piece imbues that vibrance by the sea, which I tried to capture in short strokes and thicker, more painterly texture, which can give more movement and motion to a small size piece. And if a little sand gets uh, mixed in there, then that's just the way it was meant to be. <laughs> The title of this lava painting is A Story. I've been fascinated with volcanoes and all things of the earth for a very, very long time, possibly since birth. I really enjoy the challenge of painting cool and warm tones in the same painting uh, in order to create smaller streaks of the bright light that you can see in the lava. I will paint a la prima, so wet on wet, with a brighter yellow as the base and then a darker red hue above. Then I will take the back of my brush and draw in lines or roughly stipple to remove that darker paint and reveal that nice surprising contrast. Volcanoes are extraordinary and unpredictable, and I like to be a little bit unpredictable in my own work. It's been a good trait to develop, and nature has taught me to do that. I love the feeling of constant movement and creation in those kinds of places. I find that the smaller the piece, the more intimate I can make it. Sort of like a short poem with concentrated feeling in just a few words. I think about my small paintings like they are short haikus, given very intense emotion. My larger scale pieces reflect more on romanticism and a grander feeling. I sometimes paint larger paintings from smaller studies, and I do enjoy taking the larger work to another place with more color and layers. This is an example of taking a smaller study and creating a larger work from a six by eight to a 24 by 18 inch painting. There's quite an intimate and poetic aspect to the nocturne. Being outside at night focuses my attention on specific things. The light, the dark, contrasts, harder shadows, softer shadows melting into black. Little vignettes and moments that I try to capture. When I take back an image and paint in the studio, I try to hearken back to the feeling of that place or environment. I take everything into account, the sound, the heat, the cold in order to express the nature of that place to me in a more pure way. I want the viewer to take all of those elements and create a new experience or moment. That way the art lives beyond my own interpretation of it. And that is the most beautiful thing to me, that I actually have very little control over the piece and its meaning once it's released. It's like a photograph of what I want to express, but it never lasts. I suppose that may be why there are strains of melancholy or loss in most of my work. And that's okay. That's more true to life. To me, art is another language, another emotion I use to interact with as many people as possible. I hope my art can show our human connections, providing us with a broader awareness of our world, and can further our understanding and empathy towards each other. I also hope that my work can help someone remember a time or a place to feel something outside of what their current situation is. The life moments and places that I paint are all visual representations of our connections to each other. <laughs>